Hey guys, Luke from MGN here. Today we're going to have a look at Amazon's MMO in New World. MGN was lucky enough to be invited to the beta, the closed beta for the game. So if you're curious about it, you want to check it out. I'm going to discuss some of the features and discuss the beta in general right now. I'm going to backdrop all of this to some of the beta footage, me running around killing things, doing some of the starter quests that are available thus far. So if you're curious about the MMO, and you want to have a look, well, stick with me. I'm going to go through it right now, and then you'll know. Stick with me. Alrighty, so like I mentioned in the intro, we're going to have a look at Amazon's MMO in New World. I'm going to set some of the background footage that I've collected uh, playing the closed beta thus far in the background, so enjoy that. I'm going to be honest with you from the get-go, I really didn't have high hopes or much interest in Amazon's new MMO project, New World. They just never lit the world on fire with their games, or even with the games that they planned to make that never saw the light of day. You can google games relating to Amazon, you get a plethora of articles about mismanagement, about a general goods company trying to put their finger into too many pies, in the gaming sphere as well. Their shooter in Crucible got shut down after only a few months, and the general consensus is that the game just kinda sucked, and Amazon sucked at making it not suck. Based on feedback from people who played the game, and thought it sucked, but wanted Amazon to make it suck less. Instead, the roadmap was scratched, and the game was shut down after a very, very short tenure. That's not the only example that gave me a sour taste in the mouth even before playing New World. There was the much anticipated and hyped successor to Lord of the Rings Online. Whilst the cancellation didn't have that much to do with the development of the game, rather than the agreement between Amazon and the outside hire they decided to go with in Tencent, well, things went wrong contractually, it still shows a precedent of mismanagement from Amazon when it comes to getting a decent video game product out the door, and handling the player and fan base associated with it. So, when New World was announced and then delayed back from its original launch day, it didn't really incite a lot of faith, for myself at least, that the game would be A. Any good, B. Polished, and C. Open to feedback. Look, I must say I was pleasantly surprised when point C came to light during the game's alpha, wherein players were well within their rights to be upset about the game's in-game cash shop. Having a cash shop in general in an NMO that is not free to play, it was always going to raise concerns. After all, you're paying your hard-earned money to play the game, should all that content that you downloaded not be available to you. What's worse is that during the alpha, this version of the cash shop included what Amazon described as quote unquote quality of life items and boosts. Even before the game launched it would appear that it was kind of doomed to fail, if the outcry from those alpha players wasn't addressed at all. A pay to win cash shop, MMO sounds more like a cheap mobile game than a genuine chance for a game to be released and be the standard for MMOs from that point on. I say I'm pleasantly surprised because we'll get there. In what would be a turning point for the game, Amazon quickly addressed this issue and announced that those boosts and what the community had deemed pay to win, a pay to win model I guess, was shelved and those items were removed from the game's store for the next publicly available version of the game. The current version of the cash shop strictly features cosmetic items. Look, it's a step in the right direction, if not entirely bucking the trend of developer greed. Would it have been nice to entirely move the cash, remove the cash shop? make all those cosmetics that are in there now available just by playing the game and achieving in New World in general? Yes, absolutely would have been. And it would have been a huge public relations boost for the game also, the internet would eat that shit up. When's the last time that you played an MMO that didn't have a cash shop, whether it be cosmetic or not? It was an opportunity for a breath of fresh air, but uh, alas, Amazon did the bare minimum and removed the pay to win elements. So you can see they're listening, which is you know, giving me the pleasant surprise I mentioned, but if not fully understanding. So you can understand that when MGM was invited to play the New World's closed beta, I was trepidatious as to whether the game would be entertaining and polished enough to the point where playing it would bring our audience some impressions of the beta, you know, that would be good, would it, would it be a painful slog, or would it be something that is, you know, enjoyable to the point where I wanted to play it in my own time, as well as not just covering it for MGM. Alright, let's, let's have a look at the features that Amazon is sort of, well, featuring I guess, and hoping will be a selling point of the game from the beta through the game's full launch. The first one is progress through choice and not just endlessly killing mobs. 
Amazon boasts that regardless of your chosen activity, whether it be gathering plants and herbs for medicinal, potion pur purposes, things like that, tending hides to make armor and clothes for characters and slaying enemies, turning in quests, look, all the above, you're going to feel like your character is growing in one sense or another. It's pretty widespread acceptance across major MMO games that killing mobs is the fastest and best way to advance your character. And this is an issue often because the game boils down to just clicking on the bad guys until they're dead, and that's the main way to progress. It really takes you out of the universe, it oversimplifies RPG elements in MMORPG games. So, to have Amazon advertising that the game will feel like you're making progress regardless of what role you decide to take in their universe, was a good start, if they can pull it off, and if the balance of progression across all those activities, you know, aligns well. So the player can focus their time on a particular method of progression without having the fear of missing out in another method, if that makes sense. You know, you don't have to miss out if you're spending your time elsewhere. How do they achieve this segregation? Well, the player's progress is broken down into three different categories or methods. The first will feel fairly familiar if you've played any MMO or any RPG in basically the history of the universe, and that's stats. All the familiar stats from pretty much every RPG are here. You've got strength, dexterity, intelligence, constitution. You get the idea. If you're playing a tank, you grab some strength and constitution. If you're playing a rogue or assassin archetype, you grab plenty of dexterity, mages get intelligence. Again, you get the idea. It all feels very familiar. You start off with five points in each stat. Then when you level up, you can pick where your new stat points will be allocated. That method of progression is a mainstay in these types of games. And at least progressing through this method is going to feel like pretty familiar. The second progression method is going to feel again pretty familiar if you've played other MMOs, and they give the player a lot of options. Of course, I'm talking about trades, something referred to as jobs in other games or professions, but Amazon is calling them trades, so here we are. Like I said, they give the player options. Trades are usually something you can dedicate yourself entirely to in New World in order to play as a sort of money making machine in your chosen profession trade. That, or it could be something you do in your downtime to make items for yourself, or in between that endless killing mobs. That's another option. Or master all the trades, develop systems for min-maxing a trade, play the auction house, level that, you, you know what I mean? There's a lot there. And I'm glad to see this as an inclusion as a game's, one of the game's mechanics. But whether it actually involves decent role-playing that can keep pace with the dungeon plundering murder method of leveling and progression, well, more time than the beta allows, we'll see how that turns out. The third method of progression is somewhat unique, at least to the genre. If you're familiar with the concept, it's something we see from time to time, that not too often in RPG games, um, and you see it in shooters plenty, but not too option often in the MMO sphere, I guess. It's weapon mastery, of course. The title is pretty self-explanatory. You use a specific weapon type a lot, you become proficient in that weapon type, and then you get bonuses depending on the depth of your dedication to that weapon type. At base level, you might think that this is pretty straightforward, that the bonuses aren't going to mean a whole lot, and it's not going to add any immersion or role playing. But that's not what I've found so far, it's actually quite deep. And in the weapon mastery lies the difference between your characters and someone else's. Each weapon mastery has multiple trees, and you have to choose between them, with each providing different and unique bonuses to your character and weapon, whilst wielding that weapon type, including skills. You can't get every tree finished and every bonus and attribute available, so picking and choosing will make your character unique, and helps maintain the excitement for, you know, dedicating your time to mastering a specific weapon type. I like this idea more than I thought I would, and it adds a lot of potential for longevity. Obviously, there'll always be a meta, and one option will be specifically better than the others. It's just Amazon's job here to, to make sure the differences are as minimal as possible in terms of performance, but not playstyle and fun. You want those to feel different. Again, it'll take time to see how this meta is managed beyond the beta. The second spelling point we're going to go for is that it has a faction based identity system, and at base value, at least what I've played at the beta so far, it seems pretty diverse. Yeah? Um, it's not an entirely new or creative system having factions, but having an MMO without the sort of them versus us feature against other players. Well, the PvP system doesn't really have a spine without that, sort of creating a mindset within the player base of them versus us. I'm not a huge fan of the faction name, but I do understand the necessity. It needs to feel familiar. 
Each player will choose one of three different factions and the choice is based on that faction's sort of particular mindset, the goals, NPC characters, and how they align with your own. It's a good move. You know, there isn't just a black and white, choose the bad guys or the good guys, choose the red team or the blue team, based on no other information other than what colors they are and whether they're good or bad. There's a bit of genuine choice here um, and it makes the game feel pretty alive. That's a good move. Obviously it serves to divvy up players when it comes to PvP content, but it also gives them some identity for their character also. Depending on how successful your chosen faction is, we get bonuses depending on which territories, quote unquote, or settlements again. Again, the danger here is that one particular faction will bloat on a server and will always be the clear best choice. It's something that Amazon hasn't really addressed how they're going to manage. So we'll see, I'm not terribly hopeful on that considering how quiet things have been. The three choices of factions are the Marauders, which is essentially the Slytherin of your choices. They care about who is strong and how they get that strong isn't super relevant to them. The second is the Syndicate, you know, your spy master types. They're sneaky, they steal your stuff, they want to know everything, own everything, you get it. The last is the Covenant, they believe in faith, righteousness and just general high horse behavior. The Holy Knight I talk, really, is driven by faith for well, whether that's a good or bad thing. The third selling point or feature point that we're gonna talk about, at least from a beta perspective, is that it has, the game in general, has action-based combat, not just sort of number ticking, keyboard face rolling, click on an enemy, wait for it to die combat. You're not just clicking an enemy and waiting for their health bar to reach zero in New World. You know, you don't just throw in some debuffs every now and then and well, that's the combat. You know, it's it feels exhilarating and, you know, it actually depends on the player's skill. Like, the outcome of a battle will depend on your skill rather than just who has a bigger number in their stat slot. That's good. And that applies whether it be PvE or PvP, and I like that. It makes the game a bit, you know, exciting, exhilarating, yeah. And, you know, having played a fair bit of the beta, I can say that it does live up to this promise. The game doesn't feel like a point and click type MMO. You have to genuinely play the game. You can't be passive to achieve best results or any results in general, to be honest. If you don't evade, you get punished. If you don't block, you get punished. If you aren't using your weapon skill tree, you get punished. The game rewards taking an active role and that's something that isn't always present in MMO games. And if it is, it isn't done early with skills and mechanics that are actually interesting. Usually all that is reserved for end game content to push the player base to continue to pay their subscription fee. If all the best and most fun content is gated behind a high level, well, you've got to put in the amount of time to get to that high level. But Amazon's new world doesn't have a subscription fee. So you get that quality of excitement that's usually reserved for the end game from the get go. It's, it's a good difference to have between new world and, and sort of mainstays in the genre. And th this style of combat, it works really well to show off the weapon mastery system I mentioned earlier. The combat encourages the player to sort of experiment, come up with strategies that fall outside a typical MMO just going through your rotation. Just because your character has highly invested in intelligence and ice gauntlets doesn't mean they won't find utility in going through the trap skill tree with muskets. Root an enemy with a weapon type that would typically fall outside of your mage archetype, then follow up with your damage main mastery, whatever that might be. We're talking about wizards, so we'll go ice go on here. Look, this is just one example how the active combat system rewards experimentation and a, and a non-passive playstyle. Why is that important? Well, it prevents the game from being boring. It opens up New World to more than just MMO veterans, because you get great elements from action RPG games, uh, Souls-like experiences, and more. MMO might be a dirty word when it comes to the sort of grind versus fun dialect, but the combat system presented in New World leans more towards the point of the game being about fun than endless grinding to watch your numbers go up through gear. Moving on, and sort of related to that point, is that there are things to do in the game that are pretty varied and promote fun over grinding. And that's the way it appears from what Amazon has released or advertised or boasts about thus far. So continuing on the emph emphasis on the enjoyment factor and keeping gameplay varied, New World has a lot of options for content to do into the aid of the game's longevity, even at launch. It's something that isn't done well in 
a lot of other you know, MMOs, especially right now or lately, that is. That's actually making the factions mean something to the gameplay. And by that means creating content for the player to simply enjoy regardless of reward. New World aims to achieve this through a few different methods. And even at a glance, you can tell that this concern is something that Amazon has thought through. And that's good. They've taken an active step to make content that is not so level gated, or maybe not level gated, but item level gated, and, and give you something that will appeal to basically everyone, regardless of their MMO preference. Some people really enjoy a balanced PvP experience in a sort of an arena environment in their MMO games. Some people really enjoy that competitive aspect of games, but would rather apply that in being better than another team at PvE content. And some people honestly, genuinely do just enjoy the grind, myself included. Hey, you know, to some people, boring is relaxing and comforting. So, you know, grinding can absolutely be a good thing and it doesn't need to be absent to make a good MMO. I think that's a misconception or a train of thought that we need to challenge that an MMO needs to be without grinding to be good. That's not true. Anyway, MMO audiences, they're pretty diverse, even under one genre. So in order to achieve all this, to cater to all those different preferences, Amazon has developed a few different systems to cater to the audiences of each. I'm gonna go through them quickly right now with you. The first game type is War. This is for those of you that love going toe to toe with the other players. No hold back, no mercy, are you better than them? As the name suggests, there are large scale battles and it looks like there's gonna be 50 players on each side of a, from a faction with territories and town bonuses in full effect. You know, you control a settlement, you kill players that aren't on your side, you reap the rewards, you sort of get the idea. The second game mode or game type, whatever you want to call it, is Expeditions or Invasions. And this is strictly PvE prog uh, content for progression. If you're familiar with basically any MMO in the history of the universe, you know what dungeons and raids are. Expeditions are what New World terms dungeons as, and you know, they're smaller groups running through a dungeon, clearing mobs, taking down elites, trying to stay alive. Whereas the invasions are what New World terms as, well, that's their raids, I guess. They're much larger scale, as raids usually are, and require the player to team up with other max level characters to face waves of much tougher enemies than the expeditions. So there's your PvE slot for progression. The next is Outpost Rush, and this is PvE content wherein you compete against another team, effectively making it PvPvE. This is often referred to as gambits in other likewise games. I might call them gambits from here on in, but uh, you know, Amazon are continuing to name things thematically with their universe. I like that a lot. It's familiar content, you know, the gambits that fits with the game's theme. You know, it helps you stay immersed that they haven't just said, you know, this is our raid, this is our uh, dungeon, this is our gambit. So with Outpost Rush, uh, with gambits being called Outpost Rush, you know, I like that. It stays in the universe, helps you get immersed. As far as gameplay, um, two teams race to gather more resources and push through PvE content. It's going to feel familiar. Um, with PvP giving them bonuses to that along the way. It's these systems of content that, well, I believe anyway, will really aid in both the accessibility and longevity of New World. There's a game mode for just about every type of player, you know, and they're varied enough to give the player plenty of hours once they reach the level cap. And obviously each mode is extremely wide open to sort of additional content, DLC, free updates, you know, all that kind of stuff in the future. All right, so that's just about wrap things up for my impressions of the game thus far in the beta stage and sort of what Amazon has advertised or, you know, promises that they're gonna deliver when the game launches. Obviously we're gonna be playing the beta pretty heavily, heavily and we'll bring guides, how-to, best practices, reviews, all that kind of stuff. Um, gameplay modes, all the kind of great things that you've come to expect. So if you're interested in Amazon's new world, be sure to regularly check out the MGN.GG blog, our YouTube channel of course, where we've already begun posting great guides and how-to tips on the game thus far. Yeah, so keep an eye out. Thanks for checking out the video. We'll see you in new world.